Hello everyone, my name is Sean. And I'm Visha. Today we wanted to discuss communication styles with you guys and the importance of communication in relationships and systems and specifically in the context that we have in South Africa at the moment during lockdown. Because mm, I think so many people are stuck at home with family members or loved ones that often there's a lot of conflict there or um, unresolved emotions. So I think this is something we decided to speak about since communication is so important during a time like this. Absolutely. I think, you know, this topic came up for me a while ago when someone asked me how important communication actually really is and, and how effective real, open, honest communication can be. And, you know, the answer to that question is quite a broad spectrum, but they, there's also a lot of variables that you have to take into account when looking at effective communication. Mm -hmm. But the simple answer to that is if you do have open and effective communication, I do believe that a relationship has much greater chance of survival. Mm. Even during times of difficulty. Um, and I think a lot of people, even with their own struggles, communicating through that mm. allows people to move through it more gracefully almost. Yes. It allows you to have more social support during that time and heal from that better and actually move closer to people in your mm. life when you're even going through your own struggles. Absolutely. And I think that is actually being challenged now with all these restrictions being placed on people. You can't go outside too often or for longer periods. A lot of people can't work. There's so much restrictions placed on families where they have to now adapt and be placed in one setting for an extended period of time. And this also brings up a lot of energy for these members. These members are generally not used to spending this much time with one another over a stretched period of time. If you think about it, normally they would go to work, go to school. All of these factors are now being taken away or have been taken away and people have to start adapting. And even other coping strategies like exercising or seeing other loved ones um, all of those things are now, as you say, being challenged and being taken away. Um, and I think now during periods of stress, whether that's financial pressure that a lot of people are experiencing, or economic pressure, or even just uncertain, uncertainty during this time and not knowing, um, I think then these sort of communication styles are challenged and they become even more important. Absolutely. I think, you know, when you talk about communication styles, what I look for in practice specifically is three types of very important communication styles. But I do think we can add a fourth yeah. one to that. Um, we would generally would talk about a passive style, an assertive style and also an aggressive style. But one we, we generally see quite often is a style called passive aggressive. Yeah, definitely. It's very prevalent. And I think it's yeah, it's a combination between passive and aggressive. So I think we can go into the first one, mm -hmm. let's say with a passive um, style of communication, that's when you are so focused on other people's needs and you n neglect your own. Yeah. And I see that in a lot of our clients here, exactly. where they don't express th their needs, they don't communicate the things that are happening for them internally. And often those things do either, uh, there's health implications um, or substance use, but in some other way that energy needs to come out somewhere. Yeah, I think that is one of the most um, prevalent ones we work with. A passive style is oftentimes I describe it as a sad style because you have a person that contains so much potential, so much energy potentially, but they can never share. They never feel confident enough, valued enough, um, or it's a pattern of you know response in their environment where they've learned over time, they've adapted, that normally when they do share, people respond in a hurtful or a wrong, you know, manner. In a harmful way. Exactly. So in a, in a nutshell, these people generally keep what they view as important to themselves because they fear what the environment might respond with. So these people generally have a lot of energy contained, a lot of potential, again, but they don't get the opportunity to share it as effectively as other people, not because people aren't willing necessarily to listen, but because they feel they are not worth sharing. Yeah, and that people, I think, start to believe that they're not, they are not allowed to take up space. Yes. They're not allowed to have an impact. And one thing I, I often hear in clients is them saying, um, no, that person will feel bad if I express this, or no, they, will, they won't like that response from me. But often, that's also important and yeah. we're allowed to take up space and have an influence on the world around us. Yeah. And often I think 
uh, with a lot of these styles that it develops through childhood, through learning ways of communicating. And I think as you also mentioned that if you grow up in a household where either the, the, the attention goes into other family members or let's say you have a, a parent with their own struggles with mm -hmm. mental health um, or substance use and the energy is constantly put into them yeah. you can learn that I need to be quiet I need to be the wallflower yeah. um, I can't take up more resources so I need to be there for everyone else but I'm I can't take up more energy and that then yeah. often results in that passive style of communication exactly it, in a way if you you know layman terms you can you can look at it as a um, agreeable person very agreeable yeah. also people pleasing behavior <clears throat> when they engage in these communication styles it's mostly about the needs of others versus the needs of themselves that they put in front of them um, and this is you know quite opposite of another style we get which is the aggressive style where this person is very dominating uh, but not in a, it's not a nice way in which they overpower a conversation where they take the lead on most things and you know push people down other people with their opinions and and views it's quite an aggressive approach to communication mm, and almost forcefully getting those resources to themselves and i think that again we can take this back to childhood where if you had a lack of resources and when I say resources, I mean emotional time or attention being devoted to you. If you didn't have that and you had to to fight for it, maybe if you grew up in a large family yeah. where everyone has to constantly fight for attention, yeah. it might also result in this way of communicating. I think that's actually a very important point that, you know, communication styles are something that we learn, we, we observe in our environment. We also get to practice some of these styles as we grow up and whatever the environment responds with, that is generally what our style will be. Absolutely, people have the ability to move through um, these styles effectively and develop new ones as they go along, but they generally are fine in practice as a predominant style that they, that they are facing or that they, they exhibit. And it generally comes from childhood experiences. If you have a child that you know, is somewhat aggressive in their communication, as Lisha just mentioned, it is someone that probably had to fight for attention, someone that had to move through various obstacles and allow voice, you know, allow them to do that. I once worked with a client that, you know, a very short individual and she felt that she had to always speak up loud and, and be somewhat aggressive because otherwise people don't take her seriously because they would refer to her as she's cute and she doesn't come across as angry and you know they don't take this person seriously so that person adapts the communication style to fit what she needs definitely and i think that often one thing i just want to emphasize as well is that people start to see themselves and equate this themselves with this communication style so they start to often see themselves as oh i'm a, i'm an angry person or i'm an aggressive person and what we want to emphasize here is that that might be your way of communicating, but that's separate and mm. separate from who you are as a person. Yes. And we want to work on um, sort of developing and starting to utilize more effective ways of communicating your needs. Absolutely. I think that is it's key to understand that communication, if done effectively, it can be quite an efficient way to solve problems, be heard, understand one another. And obviously, by doing that, you progress in any relationship that you find yourself in or any system. Systems referring to a family contact, work environment, peer groups, anything like that will inevitably require communication to strengthen a relationship and to enhance connection between members. And this is oftentimes, you know, reflected in a style of communication referred to as the, the assertive yeah. style, if you will the healthy style this is what we want to see in people and what we want to help them develop this style is a style that essentially comes down to i can speak i value what i have to say but i also value what you have to say ultimately mm, definitely and it's about um, that compromise i think that a lot of people feel like they either have to be selfish or they completely need to 
just bend for mm. everyone but i think it's about finding that balance yeah. that healthy balance of i can assert and express to you what uh, what my needs are and what yes. i'm feeling and i can also have space for you to to absorb what you might express back to me without that defensiveness yes. um, or without that damage in the way that i view myself absolutely we're allowed to negotiate that absolutely i also think with members like this or individuals that can exhibit a sort of style and effectively communicate you also find that these individuals generally understand themselves quite effectively they are confident in their abilities and their in their opinions and thoughts by no means do they actually put someone down but they value themselves and what they have to offer and by valuing themselves i believe it gives them this ability to value others as well mm -hmm. they are on a level where they can talk to themselves and about themselves and also listen to what other people have to say about themselves mm -hmm. without hurting them yeah. in an emotional way and i think often when people have a lot of insecurities or a sort of uh, they they feel insecure with who they are as a person they can't take any feedback, they can't take any criticism because that shatters any belief they have about themselves where with an assertive person or a, a assertive style of communication, that person can oftentimes take mm. feedback and process it and, yes. and see, and I often tell clients, absorb that feedback see what's appropriate and what's applicable to you if it's not then that's fine you don't need to adjust and change yeah. for every feedback you get in your life but i think to have that open mind and be able to reflect um on even behaviors and mm. things that you might exhibit and then afterwards thinking about it and processing what happened there yeah. and being able to go back and say oh i made a mistake without yeah. thinking that that detracts from your worth or your value. Absolutely. I think if you had to sum it up, you know, the um, a passive individual would generally be quite agreeable. Yes. Um, an assertive individual in their communication style would be, you know, valuing both individuals mm -hmm. in the context that they speak of. And then the assert of the aggressive individual would generally be quite defensive and somewhat attacking at times. Um, between those styles but then you also get a combination where people move from one style to another or they use elements of both styles in one communicating con context and one of these examples is a passive aggressive style and I think that's something that a lot of people are I think relatively familiar with yes. someone that's passive aggressive and we often notice that people will for example, will say they're fine with something, but non-verbally through their body language, maybe through their facial expressions, they they communicate displeasure, they communicate yes. dissatisfaction, that they're not okay, but yet verbally they'll say, no, I'm fine. Exactly. And this actually creates a confusing state because in this communication, this transaction between you and another member or group of people, you know, you are exhibiting non-verbal signs that clearly something is not okay. Clearly there's energy contained within the system, but verbally you are expressing that you are. Now, in a case like this, you generally don't agree with something or something was said that hurt your feelings, but you just don't have enough of that self-confidence or energy to, to speak up and say what you truly feel. And that then results in this energy being transferred into a non-verbal signal where your foot might start rattling, you might say, no, everything is fine. You might avoid the conversation with that person for a bit because you feel somewhat uneasy. In cases like this, it's very important to understand that your view absolutely does matter and your body will find a way to get rid of that energy. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes what we see here as well is that that sometimes moves into substances. Yeah, definitely. And I think one thing I also want to mention with that is that people sometimes feel like they are not allowed. They must either completely tell you the whole story of everything I'm feeling or I'm, I have to say I'm okay. And what I often tell clients is that there is a place in the middle where you can express to someone, you know what, I'm not okay, I'm going through some things but I'm still processing it and I'll speak to you about it when I'm ready. Because that's an assertive style of communication yes. that is i'm still explaining to you i'm still being honest um, and i'm i'm sort of including you in my process yeah. where with um passive aggressive that's um communication style it almost pushes someone in, away yeah. and it, it it makes me think of that stereotypical example of a husband asking his wife what's wrong and she's saying no i'm fine mm. and it's that typical example yeah. where i think yeah. it's 
yeah, like you also said, it causes confusion and it makes it causes separation because now, if we play the movie forward, now the partner is no longer going to ask you how you're feeling because he already thinks you're going to say you're fine. Yeah. So I'm not going to speak to her when she's like this, and it it starts to just being avoiding one another, yeah. uh, not communicating, and it's, it has a negative um, spiral. Absolutely, I think if you if you look at that situation where you know you would ask your wife or your partner or your friend if something is bothering them and the answer is no but you think you can clearly see something is going on it also it, it creates this dynamic where you want to be there potentially listen and, and try and help solve a problem but the other person is not confident enough to share what they truly feel but they also badly want to be listened yeah. to they want they want someone to hear what they have to say they want to badly share what they have to share now we have the situation where i want to share but I don't want you to know what I feel because I don't know I don't know how to transfer that. And you have your partner that wants to mm -hmm. help, but you're telling them that there's nothing wrong. It creates the cycle and it just keeps growing in energy because we learn from these behaviors over time, these communication styles. And I think over time as well, it causes a lot of resentment yeah. because it starts to be, I think people then start to feel like they're alone in this. Because they're not moving towards someone and allowing someone to support them, yeah. they feel like I, I have to do deal with this on my own yes. and I'm alone in this and no one's supporting me and my partner is no longer even mm -hmm. asking me how I'm feeling. Exactly. It's yeah. it's this vicious cycle. Yeah. And I, I think that through understanding or identifying maybe what communication style we often express by identifying that and then noticing it when it starts to come up and yeah. Almost pausing, reflecting a little bit, okay, what am I actually, what's really going on for me? And either taking some time to process and then expressing it to your partner or your loved one, whoever. Um, or, or communicating that up front yeah. and expressing what you feel and what you need, I think, is yeah. um, ultimately the goal. Yes, absolutely. You know, identifying, I think it can really help a lot if you can identify what pattern you are, what style you are. But also if you and your partner can sit down and identify each other's styles yeah. so that you can look at this is what they he or she might present with at times and we need to know and we need to understand how to work with this it's vital for a relationship to understand the dynamics within the context to be able to move forward effectively and it might also i think partners might without realizing a trigger one another yeah. so for example um someone that grew up in a household where they didn't feel listened to, they didn't feel like they were important, yeah. might go out and seek someone that's assertive and dominant and yeah. um, makes all the decisions because then they don't have to. And it can also be this vicious cycle yeah. of the one encouraging the other. But I think ultimately then both both people's needs are almost missed. Yeah. Um, and I think then moving towards each other each other and starting to um, just identifying when that comes up for you um, and communicate and I think is mm -hmm. is so important yeah it's a term that we often then would hear as we are drifting apart and essentially what that means is my needs aren't being met mm -hmm. you know communicating is quite a broad concept um, quite a big thing to try and understand and I hope that this has somewhat helped you understand the different styles and how they present and how important communication is on a general level, it is vital for most relationships mm -hmm. to survive, and that is to be able to effectively communicate at all times. Definitely. But thank you for um, listening, and if you have any questions or any comments, we'd like to hear about it. Um, yeah, we'd like to do further discussions like this. All right. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you.